Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant, and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. There have been more than 70 confirmed COVID-19 cases identified among church groups in Kyungi Province. During its regular briefing on March 16th, Kyungi's COVID-19 response team urged churches to comply with guidelines so as to avoid group infections. As of March 16th, there were 256 confirmed COVID-19 cases in Kyungi. Among these, there were 46 new cases, including those stemming from a group infection among the members of a church in Sangnam City. This church was forced to close and investigations are currently underway regarding the infection sources of each individual and the persons with whom they have had contact. Despite recommendations to change religious service modes, group infections continue to occur at some churches, including those in the cities of Bucheon, Suwon, and Sangnam. The response team official also revealed plans to operate Kyungi type treatment centers for mild cases. The first of these centers was established in Yongin City. Kyungi Province will expand the operation of these centers to facilitate the physical and psychological recovery of patients. Movement information pertaining to patients will be disclosed in accordance with health authority guidelines and in line with legal and privacy requirements. In Korea, farms that supply ingredients for school meals are facing difficulties since the beginning of the school year has been postponed due to the COVID-19 outbreak. To help these farmers, Kyungi Province organized a sales event that saw very successful results. This cucumber farm has been supplying its products to schools. However, with schools closed, the farm had to sell its products to market merchants at prices that were below cost. This strawberry farm faced a similar situation. Since the farm had no option but to sell its strawberries while they were fresh, it was selling them at less than half of normal prices. 작년, 재작년 계속 해오던 것도 올해 예상하다가 거기에 맞춰서 딸기 재배를 쭉 해왔는데 어, 이게 안 나가니까 사실은 막막하죠. 막막하고 어, 피해도 피해지만 지금 딸기를 어떻게 해서 소부, 처분할 데가 없어가지고 Working with the Kyungi Agri-Food Institute and Kyungi Province Eco-Friendly Agricultural Association, the province held a sales event that offered mixed packages of these eco-friendly farm products at low prices. Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung also personally promoted these products via social networking services. During the event, more than 7,000 packages, equivalent to a week's sales supply, sold out in just two hours. 공공기관이 최소한의 에, 어떻게 에, 농가들을 지원할 것인가 고민하면서 어, 한 번도 해본 적은 없지만 에, 작게 포장해서 어, 이 공동체의 많은 어떤 협력과 어, 연대의 힘을 믿자 하고 한번 시도해 본 거죠. Consumers who purchased the packages also actively participated in the event by uploading consumer reviews and encouraging messages via social networking services. On March 12th, Kyungi Province, Namyangju City, and the Kyungi Urban Innovation Corporation signed an agreement for the reinvestment of the profits from Dasan New Town Development for the benefit of Kyungi residents, the first initiative of its kind in Kyungi Province. The planned Dasan New Town is situated in northeastern Kyungi. This development project which is estimated to cost a total of 4.5 trillion Korean won, is expected to contribute to the balanced development of southern and northern regions of the province. The basic principle of this agreement is to return Dasan Newtown development profits to the residents of the province. This is the first case of profit return from a public development project to Kyungi residents. In this instance, 
the profits are projected to amount to approximately 433 billion Korean won. 경기 도민이자 남양주 시민들 잘 되자고 하는 일이니까 이렇게 원만한 협의를 통해서 이제 정말로 남양주시 그리고 우리 경기도 입장에서 경기 동북부 발전에 서로 협력하고 큰 성과를 내기를 기대합니다. Profits returned from Dasan Newtown development will be used for the resolution of local issues in Namyangju city, including those regarding transportation and the environment. Gyeonggi Province and Namyangju City will focus on administrative support, while the Gyeonggi Urban Innovation Corporation will undertake the implementation of the project and the execution of expenses. At a press conference on March 17th, Gyeonggi Province announced the issuance of its first administrative order to religious facilities that have not complied with COVID-19 prevention guidelines. While the overall increase in the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Korea is slowing, group infections continue to occur in Seoul and Gyeonggi regions. Ignoring these guidelines, some churches still held gatherings that resulted in group infections, thus becoming the subject of social condemnation. And to address this issue, Gyeonggi Province issued its first administrative order affecting such facilities. Subject to this order are more than 130 church facilities that did not comply with any of the seven infection prevention guidelines, including the use of masks and on-site provision of hygiene products. They will be prohibited from holding gatherings until March 29th. Religious facilities that violate this order will be subject to a fine of up to 3 million Korean won. While Koreans are experiencing great difficulties purchasing masks, there are those who warm the hearts of others by donating handmade masks to their neighbors. In this room at the Pochon City Agricultural Technology Center, members of a local women's organization are busy making masks by hand. They plan to make 1,000 masks for distribution to transport workers, including taxi drivers and bus drivers. <laughs> 지난 목요일부터 다음 주 화요일 정도까지 하면은 천 개가 완성이 될것 같아요. 지금 그 마스크가 많이 부족한 가운데 빨리 저희가 어 주일도 없이 그냥 하고 있거든요. 얼른 아주 급한 곳에 빨리 전달이 되었으면 좋겠어요. Women's organization members in Yongin City also delivered 1,000 handmade masks to working class individuals. Such acts of compassion are spreading across the nation. For the first time among the regional authorities of Korea, Gyeonggi Province has investigated all 388 mutual financing cooperatives in the province to identify tax delinquents. Since these cooperatives lack deposit seizure systems, they are frequently used by delinquents to conceal their assets. Through this investigation, Financial assets of 3,792 tax delinquents, amounting to more than 12 billion Korean won, have been seized. After initially requesting tax payments, the province will take action against those who fail to pay taxes in accordance with related laws. With mass shortages continuing to be a serious issue in Korea, even after the introduction of the designated mask purchasing day by age system, textile enterprises in northern Gyeonggi regions began manufacturing masks. Since March 13th, this scarf manufacturer has been producing masks. 
Another enterprise produces materials for masks instead of its normal knitwear. There are a total of 60 textile enterprises in northern Kyungi regions that are participating in the manufacture of masks. These enterprises are manufacturing masks that can block 99.9% .9 of bacteria. These enterprises target daily production of up to 210,000 masks from March 30th. 하루 일일 저희 회사에 생산하는 것만 7만 장에서 8만 장 정도로 보시고 지금 두개 업체에서 하니까 14만 장에서 18만 장 그래서 20만 장까지 생산 계획을 늘리고 있고요. 아마 그게 2, 3일 안에 시작이 될 것으로 보입니다. These antibacterial masks will be sold to approximately 150 organizations for 1000 Korean won each. 마스크를 구하기가 굉장히 힘들어서 저희가 2월 말서부터 저희가 선제적으로 그러면 경기 북부 지역에 있는 섬유 기업들이 단합을 해서 마스크를 생산해 보자라는 취지에서 저렴한 가격으로 공급하려고 저희가 준비를 했습니다. Concurrently, Gyeonggi Province has submitted a proposal to KFDA and the related ministry for regulatory amendments that would allow medical mask manufacturers to produce general purpose masks. This proposal seeks to utilize medical mask manufacturing facilities that are currently idle due to a lack of necessary filter supplies. When the proposal is approved, up to 790,000 additional masks can be produced in the province. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.